Hello and welcome to Dreams of Wings and welcome here to Roma Urbe Airport in Rome, Italy. Apologies for the pronunciation. I am so excited to be here and hugely excited to be able to give you a preview of the brand new Hype Performance Group H160 helicopter. And a huge thank you to Hype for giving me the opportunity to fly this helicopter and to show it to you in the sim. I am a huge fan of uh, High Performance Group helicopters. If you know the channel, you know I fly the H145. Uh, I love flying the uh, HEMS missions in it. It just brings a whole new facet to the simulator. And it's actually the H145 that you can see uh, here next to the H160 now that got me into flying helicopters in the simulator. It was a uh, High Performance Group attention to detail the action pack expansion it just opened up a whole new world and with the h160 effectively what we've got now is a bigger faster uh, more powerful more modern helicopter um, but it still has that kind of airbus dna it's got the helionic system in it so if you've flown the h145 you straight away have that advantage and you feel a little bit at home in it although it does have some new features. And here you can really get an idea for the uh, size difference between the two helicopters. I'm still going to fly the H145 for sure because it it has its own character. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit smaller. But I'm really excited to see what happens when the action pack expansion comes out for the H160 because flying HEMS missions, offshore missions, in this helicopter is, uh, well, it's going to be a real treat. Now, as I say, this is a preview. So this is a pre-release version. Some things may change uh, for the final release. The final release is actually going to be on the Friday, the 27th of October. Um, so that's when you'll be able to uh, to get your hands on it. But the, the attention to detail is just absolutely exquisite. Um, I hope it comes across in these shots that uh, that I'm showing you here, just how much detail they've gone into uh, on the, the visuals. It's something that I found very much with the H145 and also flying it in VR is that it has a very tangible feel to it. Um, it has a very realistic look to it. And at the end of the day, as we know, with flight simming, it's all about immersion. The 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 more realistic it feels to you and looks to you, the more of an experience you're getting from it. And something that Hype have absolutely nailed is that uh, that visual detail, the realism, the feeling that you could reach out and touch an object, and all you can almost it's very tactile. You can almost, you can almost in your mind feel what it would feel like. Um, maybe I'm I'm getting a bit carried away with this, but I just think it's absolutely beautiful. I really do. It's an interesting design, the H160. It's a very, very modern helicopter. For example, with the rotor system, as you've probably already noticed, uh, it's uh, Airbus's Blue Edge uh, rotor blade system. It's really designed to, uh, to cut down on sound. It's a very quiet helicopter, um, very quiet indeed. You'll notice that when we fly it. Um, but it's very cutting edge. There's some really interesting systems in this. Um, I tended to fly the H145 very manually, and it's only really recently that I've started playing about with autopilot and things like that. And uh, the H160 has got all those features and a couple of extra really interesting bits that uh, we'll have a look at as well. So what we're really going to do in this video, this is uh, this is a disclaimer right up front. This is my second flight with the helicopter. I had a quick flight yesterday uh, just to get used to it, just to look at and see how a few things function, just to check that my control settings were, were okay. So this is my second flight. We're going to uh, take her up over Rome, uh, just have a, a little bit of sightseeing and then try out a few things in her as well, do some landings, takeoffs, have a look at the, the uh, automatic takeoff function that it has, and also how you can recover that when things go wrong. And just generally try and give you an overview in the short time that I have, because it would take hours to go through everything, just to give you a flavour of the capability of this helicopter and what it can actually do. 
So this is a good opportunity to say we have a Discord. We have a very healthy helicopter loving area on the Discord as well. So uh, I'll put a link to that down below. We post screenshots. We talk about aeroplanes, warbirds, helicopters. Uh, we do group flights, all that sort of thing. Really great community. And there's some very clever people as well there as well who can help with any kind of uh, technical difficulties you might be having. Great bunch of people. So I think more importantly now, you want me to stop waffling and we need to get in this beautiful helicopter, start her up and let's go for a flight. So here we are in this uh, very modern cockpit. Look at the detail of that. You see the finger marks on the, on the glass there. This is what I'm talking about with this uh, very kind of tactile feel. And we've even got a key and a biro. So, uh, and a fire extinguisher, which of course we won't be needing. Um, but uh, yeah, very nice. I do love the detail. Just brings it all to life, doesn't it? Right, anyway, let's get going. So as with the H145, we have this tablet here and there's a lot that we can do through the tablet. I'm not going to go through everything in detail, um, but uh, as you can see, uh, we've got things like um, Direction Finder, uh, which is... I guess really is going to be used more for the uh, the HEMS version, maybe. Hype radio, where you can uh, tune into uh, local radio using the operation center. Uh, Hype online, which is exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, my tablet, which is where you can um, uh, change different bits and bobs about your tablet. Flappy Bird, if you want to play Flappy Bird. <laughs> Connect uh, an EFB here. EFB Connect app, I don't have that. Web, which is uh, is different options that you can have uh, have in there. Uh, let's go back. Uh, METAR, you can check a METAR for an ICAO code. Alarms, uh, set an alarm and also set timers. Sound mixer, here you can, if there's certain aspects that you're not quite happy about, then you can change them as well. Uh, which is quite useful. I seem to remember rotor, rotor, rotor blade slap. Um, I remember when I was doing videos to start off with, with that, some people were saying, oh, you know, you can turn that down. So I think for some people, the blade slap, um, they like it a bit quieter. Personally, I, I love a bit of blade slap. Um, I like it up. Uh, little nav map. Links to little nav map. No surprises there. Help and documentation will take you through to... Um, the uh, the uh, manuals and that sort of thing. Uh, it's not at the moment. It's showing for the H145 because, as I say, this is a preview copy. Documents, uh, same kind of thing. Map submissions. This is where we'll be looking at uh, using the um, the uh, Hype Operation Center when we start doing the uh, HEMS work and that kind of thing. You'll see me using that. Um, and you'll also have seen it if you've watched the previous H145 HEMS videos, you know that we use it there. But that's a very useful little moving map and really comes in handy for the missions. Failures and maintenance. Uh, this is a uh, an aircraft that has consequences. So if you mess about with the engine, you're going to find out about it. Uh, you can also build in failures. Uh, you've got a whole list of failures that you can put into here. Uh, you can have engine fires, you can have a FADEC failure, all sorts of things that you can build into it, hydraulics, fuel, just so you can practice your techniques. Um, and again, it brings it to brings it alive. It's not just a click and go helicopter. Uh, if you want to uh, do the dangerous stuff, you can do. So, right, let's go back to Ha. Now, I want to go to Doors, and uh, we've got all our doors open at the moment, so we're going to close those. And you can actually uh, open them using the handles as well, just in case anyone's uh, wanting to do it in a slightly more realistic way. Um, but... Uh, it just makes it uh, handy to, to do everything there. And we've got a little storm window as well that we can open. Very tactile. Love it, love it, love it. We've also got the autopilot functions here, which we're going to be looking into a little bit more. You can map all these bits and bobs to your physical controllers, um, as they would be in the real thing. 
Um, I've mapped uh, I've mapped quite a few of them now. With the H145, I haven't used the autopilot a huge amount, but what I am doing with the H160 is from the get-go trying to map everything up so that I, I can do those things. Uh, but you don't need to. If you haven't got tons and tons of buttons in the real world, then you can do everything on the on the tablet here, which is quite useful. There's a lot of bits and bobs not shown at the moment. You can just see them lurking behind that autopilot, not engaged, because we're on the ground with the um, the engines off. Uh, you're not going to see that. And then also here we can change our um, our lighting as well, in the same way that you can with your physical controllers. But it just gives you gives you another option. So yeah, tons of stuff. It really is so in depth. Um, it's just uh, it's just wonderful. I I am a huge fan of high performance group helicopters. I, I, yeah, I'll tell you more when we get in the air. Um, you want to get to the interesting stuff, not just me sitting here on the ground with everything switched off waffling. Right. Okay. So I think we're now in a position to start. So I'm going to switch to the uh, the checklist, which I have open on another screen. Bit of a caveat at the moment, uh, there is no, at this stage with this preview copy, there isn't a full manual, although High Performance Group have provided some really um, detailed uh, checklists and uh, some kind of quick start information, which is uh, is really useful. Um, but as I say, I haven't got the full manual, so there may be things that when you get yours and you look at the manual, you think, why didn't he mention that? Or why didn't he point that out? Um, and that's probably the reason why. But um, to hell with it. I'm excited to show you this. Right. Okay. So power up. Uh, overhead panel. We want battery one and two on. And we want generator one, uh, generator two, and we want emergency generator on. And that, I believe, is already on. So that's good. Okay. We're going to connect ground power uh, because we are sitting here messing about uh, RA1 RA2 on, that's those two FMS1, FMS2 on and now we do the lamp test audio test have a quick look around see all our lights are lit up like a Christmas tree Everything's looking good over here as well, so that's fine. So we can uh, turn that off now. And uh, right, okay, so GPU is showing on and connected. That's great. Let's go down here to the pilot MFD. Uh, we have a look here. Engine 1 and Engine 2 have failed because we've got them off. Uh, the EPU is connected and the power-up test is okay. So we'll acknowledge those just to let the helicopter know that we have read it and we are taking note of its useful information, what it is giving us. Uh, right, uh, FND page. We check parameters, check parameters validity. So we'll have a quick look around here. Uh, we've got 1013 set on the... Uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. I am not... Um, no, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that where it is. But we can change that using the knob down here. Uh, if I select barometer, you can see we can change that here. I'm flying a weather preset um, rather than uh, real weather because I, A, want you to see the scenery in all its glory. Um, and uh, and B, uh, I'm getting to know the helicopter. And there will be a video in poor weather, I assure you, because this baby can fly in anything. Well, almost anything. So uh, that's that there. Heading, compare with standby compass. So let's have a look there. We're looking at about just a shade under 280. And how are we over there? Um, a little bit the other way. I don't know if that's... Um, let me just see if I can get a better angle with my head tracking. Yeah, it's slightly different. Slightly different. Or am I just... No, I'm talking out of my backside. They are actually the same. Looking at it more closely. Yeah, that's okay. That's good. Uh, altimeter and the IESI. I've done that. Uh, decision height and decision altitude as required. So our decision height... Uh, is zero decision al uh, the other way around decision altitude and decision height at the moment set to zero uh, i'm going to 
set the decision height to uh, let's set that to 180. Uh, we'll be using that a little bit later. Okay. Um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, lost my place on the... There we go. Actually, I'm going to set that as well. Let's set the decision altitude. I must admit, the whole decision height... Minimum altitude. Yeah, there we go. Decision uh, altitude and that sort of thing. It's something I've used a great deal, but I'm going to put those at the same thing. Uh, from memory, altitude is um, the height above sea level and decision height is the height above ground. There you go. Um, where did we get to? Uh, fuel quantity check now. Fuel quantity, I probably i am going to want to up a little bit so let's have a look at fuel actually no that's um that's fairly reasonable but what i am going to do is come over here because we don't want any nasty surprises and we will there we go uh, oh, there it is it's there oh i need to quickly show you this and i so let's go for 50 percent uh fuel load so in here we can load our crew we can close the doors as you saw before but we can also load the crew so let's load the crew while we're at it including myself have a quick look around hello crew oh i, I don't want to i don't want to tempt fate but i've got a feeling that could be an air, oh you're looking stern i think she's an airbus uh, test pilot. She's probably been sent along just to make sure I don't break the helicopter. Uh, I don't blame them, really. Equipment. This is where you can... Didn't mean to do that. Equipment. This is where you can um, change. Uh, you can open doors uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, lights. We talked about that just before. Options where you can set uh, which uh, set, um, GPS system you're using here. So I've got the uh, 750 from TDS, so I've got that one selected. Uh, you can select how you want your units to be displayed, the rotor downwash effect, uh, whether you um, automatically hide the pilot when you get in the way. You see how that popped out of the way because my uh, view was clipping into it. Uh, and then we have the setup as well, and here you can set all sorts of different things. Now on the H145, the SAS stability level for the cyclic in the tail rotor, I have a, a slightly different levels, and I'm just going to just going to knock that down a little bit while I remember. Uh, okay, so that the computer isn't quite doing so much. Uh, I need to have a bit more of a play in that, so that's a little bit ham-fisted now. I've just bobbed them down that much. Uh, right, Vortex ring state is on, aircraft damage is on, and gameplay mode is realistic, of course. I've got cyclic control set for centering springs, because that's the kind of stick I have. At some point, I am going to get a uh, get a, um, a springless, a springless stick. Uh, Follow-up trim, I have got set to both. Uh, I'm actually going to get it set to... I'm going to set it to hover, realistic. It suddenly occurs to me that I the H145, I always have it on both, but I need to start where I mean to carry on with this, so uh, we'll put it on uh, on hover. Uh, center displays reset time, two seconds. I'm going to leave that there, and uh, everything else is tickety-boo. It's telling us here we've got our feet on the pedals, because we have, and if I move the cyclic around, you can see it's showing his hands on and showing an input there. Uh, and then we've got, um, oh, I need to change that as well, I don't know, just knock you down a little bit. And then we've got the uh, step size keyboard. Right, okay. Oh, and also cold and dark, ready for takeoff. You can just set those if you don't want to faff about, but uh, I like faffing about. Uh, right, did I want to show you anything else there? I don't think I did. Okay, so anyway, we've done that. Thank God we've got the ground power selected with all the waffling that I'm doing. Where did we get to over here? We've done the fuel quantity, that's right. We uh, we moved that up. Okay, let's look at lighting now, which uh, if it's... Uh, yeah, I have just done what I... I've automatically gone up to the top panel, but it's not. It's down here. I remember now it is down here. Over oh, it's down here. So, uh, we need to have position and anti-collision lights uh, as required, so we'll put those on. 
Uh, what else do we want? Uh, signs as required. So uh, we have got some people in the back, so we'll put the signs on. And we need to arm the emergency exit sign, just in case. Cockpit lighting, we don't need to worry about too much uh, because it's daylight. So I'm going to leave that as it is, but uh, I will. We could, so we've got that set today. Yep, I'll leave that for the time being. We can have a mess around with that. And uh, if I remember, I'll show you what it looks like at night because it was something like the H145. It's quite beautiful. Right, so forward console over here. We have the floats uh, off. Wipers we don't need today. And the H tours we will have on. Uh, something I do if I'm flying around uh, uh, a mountainous area as I will have the uh, H-Tours set to mute because otherwise it goes off all the time and the Garmin as well and you end up just getting uh, getting shouted at all the time. Ooh, getting uh, involved in the body there a little bit. Right, uh, weather radar we will set to test for the time being. Uh, what if it will... Uh, yeah, it's not going to show up at the moment, probably because we're not powered up properly, so I can't do a full test. But you'll have a look at that when we uh, when we start up. Uh, right, okay, MFD, D map. That's looking fine. I haven't got a flight plan loaded into it. I'm following a flight plan on the um, on little nav map, but I will. Uh, we'll load in a VOR or something just so you can see how uh, how that works. Um, what do we get to? Right, uh, VMS page. Uh, we go to uh, come out of that. Have a quick look over here. Everything's looking fine. We can plop our numbers in there. Just have a quick look over it just to make sure that everything is uh, is where it should be. And that looks good to me. Have a look at the system page. Okay. Nothing's powered up yet, really. So uh, that's going to uh, that's not going to show a huge amount, but we can get a general idea. We can see what we've got connected up. Okay, let's come back out of there and uh, we will have a look at the weight. That look <coughs> excuse me, that looks good enough to me. I'm not going to change anything there at the moment, but you can uh, if you want to change your um, uh, if you want to change the weight of the passengers and all that sort of thing, then you can do that here. So for example, payload. We haven't got a payload, but if we wanted to, we could change uh, we could change the kilograms there, and then we can validate it. So uh, we've stuck 300 grams of uh, fictional payload. Uh, we're going to take that out again. There we go. And validate. So that's all set up, and uh, engine oil. Over here, engine oil levels and temperatures check. So that's absolutely fine. We've got good fuel load and the temperature is uh, relatively low, of course, because we're not going anywhere at the moment because I'm waffling. Right, the next thing on the checklist uh, is OEI, one engine inoperative rating selection. And you can select it to high or low. Uh, my limited understanding is that, that is the amount of talk it's going to uh it's going to supply now um any real world airbus helicopter pilots watching this i would love it if you could just put down in the comments a little bit more detail of what that's all about as i say i haven't got the manual yet um so i'm not entirely sure what that's all about my hunch is that it means that if we did have an engine go out that governs how much torque it's going to allow the the one engine that is working to supply, but I could be very wrong there. Uh, this is a good, good point in the video to say, obviously this isn't a tutorial, <laughs> in case you hadn't already guessed. Right, okay, next section. Um, flight controls check to be performed once per day, so we're gonna do it now. Let's have the auxiliary pump on, if I can remember where the hell that is. 
There's not that many switches around, so it can't be that difficult. Uh, here we go. Auxiliary pump on, cyclic stick, longitudinal and lateral. So, yeah, we can move that around no problem at all. Quite happy with that. Collective pitch. Yeah, we've got free travel with that. That's working absolutely fine. Pedals are doing nicely. Excuse me. <coughs> we will uh, center everything. Collective is down. Let's just double check that. Collective is down. And then, whoa, inside my head. We then turn the auxiliary pump off. Okay. Now, this is the bit you've been waiting for. We actually get to start the engine. Okay, first of all, let's uh, stick our headset on. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, uh, inboard, we want the VMS, inboard pilot MFD, we want the VMS page, which is what we've got. And then uh, overhead panel, we are going to uh, go to engine one idle. Let's have a look down. Have a good look at the uh, controls, or rather the instruments, to show that everything's looking good. We want to see uh, N1 and TOT. Keep an eye on those. The rotor is spinning before N1 got to 25%. And just have a good look at everything and make sure it's doing okay. We see starters now changed to idle, so uh, that means that our engine one is now started. Right now we can go for engine two, so let's fire up engine two onto idle. Let's check the instruments, make sure that everything's looking good. Everything's been good there, and we've now got uh, two idle indicators here that show that the engine is now in idle, so that's all. Tickety boo. Right, let's uh, we can disconnect the GPU now. So that's fine. Uh, that is now off, so that's good. And uh, we don't need the floats down here, although we can set them to auto just in case. And that's now showing as uh, as indicated there. Okay, so the uh, AFCS pre-flight test collective pitch is set to minimum. Cyclic stick and pedals, hands off and feet off, and uh, A trim, AP1, AP2 backup are on. Right now we have a look over here at the uh, autopilot control panel, so we want that on and we want that on. Now we go uh, overhead to the test switch, which uh, again I've done, uh, there it is, at least it, on the 160 it's in the same place. We have a look down here, it's doing the pre-flight test, and when that's uh, done its thing it will go to pre-flight test OK. Everything's green there, that's good. There we go, pre-flight test, OK, so that's good. Right, so now we're going to have a look down here, and we're doing the AFCS uh, off, fast cut, and then on. So to do that, we're going to move it over twice, and then use the uh, AP backup on. So, one, two, there we go. And that is showing the system off. And then all I need to do now is uh, remember that it is that button. There we go, that I've got set to switch it on again. So there we go. Looks like my bindings are working, which is uh, is rather good. So we've got startup test OK here. I'm just going to remember to turn off the um, test button here. So that's that done. Right, uh, so this is the... We're now moving on to the taxiing checklist and you have to do this anyway even if you're not if you know even if you're just going to do a vertical takeoff 
uh, you need to have this set as well. So, overhead panel, engine one and engine two to flight and guard it. Let's have a look down here. We need to watch these wind up now.
phoned up Airbus saying for the crying out loud, don't let this guy fly this helicopter until he's attended a proper course. Okay, let's come over here. System test OK. Prepared as required, so for this bit, as I said, I'm just going to do it manually, so I'm not worried about setting heading or altitude or anything like that. We're just going to hand fly it for a while, and uh, so that doesn't need uh, doing anything. Uh, barometer setting, barometer setting, barometer setting, whichever way you want to say it. I'm going to leave it where I've got it there at 1013. Transponder, we don't need to worry about. Floats are auto and message list have we got anything in there no nothing is naughty so as I say manual takeoff here but we'll do an automatic takeoff in a bit I'm just quickly looking over the checklist just to make sure I've not done anything silly uh, that's fine that's all good and that is good happy 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 uh, our recommended climb speed is about 65 knots and that will show on the, the tape. Just having a quick look at here, this is quite an interesting thing. Uh, basically this tape here will give you an indication if you are going a little bit overboard. Um, it's just a nice visual indication to show you that uh, you're about to break the helicopter, which we don't want to do. Right, so let's get going. So I am just uh, using the trim release, the auto trim release, and uh, let's get flying.
see that. So if you flown the H145, it flies differently as you would expect. It's classed as a medium helicopter, so it's not like a big heavy helicopter. It still feels uh, really nice and nimble. Five hundred. Entry Warning, vortex terrain. ring state there, which is not good. Caution, terrain. There we go, got it out. I think it's safe to say I'm making a bit of a hash of this. Probably because I'm coming in too high, so let's come back round. And we'll have another stab at it. Obstacle ahead. Obstacle ahead. Obstacle ahead. Pull up. Obstacle ahead. Pull up. Obstacle ahead. Caution, terrain. I'm getting 
trees there, but uh, we'll see just how much room we've got when we get on the ground. Trying to keep her into wind.
when I was manually able to change it to height. It may be when the manual comes out that will be a little bit more obvious, but uh, it's all good learning experience. And like with uh, real world aviation, sim flying, you're learning all the time, especially on something as complex as this. So let's go and have a look at Rome. Obstacle ahead. Obstacle ahead. My uh, internet connection used to be awful for flying over autogen. Obstacle like this. ahead. Obstacle ahead. But now that it's better, it uh, makes life so much easier. Let's mute the H tours. Let's see what we can see up ahead. Vatican City. Let's see what this uh, landing pad looks like. Obstacle ahead. Obstacle. Interesting. We got uh, boofed by the wind for a moment there. Right. Well, this uh, I have to say. I do apologise to. Uh, members of the Vatican City for flying over like this. I don't think... Terrain don't ahead. I don't think that this helipad is in here. It's probably under all those trees. I'm using uh, AccuSeas, so I don't know if it's lost in, uh, in all that. I think it should be... Obstacle ahead. Obstacle ahead. Obstacle ahead. Uh that might be the GTN that's uh, chiming off. Yeah, the landing pad should be down there somewhere, I believe. And I think it's uh, probably hidden in all those trees. said that it doesn't work with the autogen or photogrammetry rather. So there we have uh, the Vatican. Come back over here and have a quick look from the front. It's the first time uh, I have flown over Rome since I was able to do so and actually see some scenery, so it's quite interesting to have a look. Let's uh, make sure we're not doing anything silly with the helicopter. There it is. I do love the scenery in this um, This is all the 
uh, photogrammetry scenery. Too low terrain. Don't you worry. Too low terrain. So I'm gonna Too low terrain. Background. Too low. Mute. Oh, it's gone. Should have done that set up with. Let's have a look at the Coliseum in the forum. This uh, is the luxury variant. Uh, on release, you have the standard civilian and the luxury variant, but we're flying the luxury variant of course. There's the Circus Maximus, just there. And the Colosseum. And of course the Forum. It's been a long time since I've been here, but it is rather splendid. So much detail. Beautiful. It is a beautiful city, without a doubt. So let's 
and see what it's going to do. See how it intercepts. So it's rolling out a little bit. Yeah, I think it's doing a from rather than a to, and that could well be because of something I have done incorrectly, but I'm just going to leave it and see what it does.
This is the uh, Aeroporto di Roma Fiumicino. I again apologize for all pronunciations. It seems wrong to uh, pronounce it. Aeroporto di Roma Fiumicino. So I am trying, but uh, not brilliant. Oh, we got some funny mesh things going on there. Not seen anything quite as uh, bad as that. So here we are. There we go. So we've we've intercepted the radial now. We're pretty much bob on, and the helicopter, bless it, is still flying itself. I just realised actually, I'm so used to. Uh, H145 speeds that uh, I hadn't really noticed that we're not really going as fast as this aircraft can do. I've got uh, multiplayer off so I don't need to worry about annoying anybody. There's no one around. What have we got? Wind 274 from 4 knot. Right, well, let's have, uh, let's have a look at an ILS approach. That should be interesting. So, uh, for the winds, the best runway is uh, 25, and that's 110 decimal 15. So, let's just bang that in here. 110, double check. 15. Transfer. Okay. So we've got that in the box. Well, let's come round. We'll come back over the airfield. And uh, almost like we're doing a circuit. Well, not quite. Not quite at all. Because I suddenly have the urge to do a bit of... 500. Like Uh, 
I say glide slope localizer, and then we are climbing to try and meet the local the glide slope. Can't talk. Just keeping an eye on the instruments down there. Let's uh, while we're messing about doing this sort of thing. Just get the engine instruments up. Someone once told me off in a video for not having uh, the engine instruments page up. Doing a landing. I do hope you can understand that uh, this is by no means a tutorial and I really do with helicopters consider that I am still learning because there is so much to take on board. Certainly if this was uh, 
if this was bad weather and we couldn't see anything, we'd be okay. Five hundred. Sometimes. There we go. So I've got my hands on the stick now, ready to cancel autopilot. So we've got uh, two red and two white on the uh, approach lights, which is, is good. The instruments are showing is still slightly high and slightly to the right of the center line. Um, but if we were to suddenly come out of cloud now, That'd be all right. We'd be uh, we, that would be a safe approach. So he is very clever, very clever. Okay, let's disengage autopilot. They have control. Some of you might argue that that isn't necessarily the case. So, uh, oh, I was going to show you the uh, aborted automatic takeoff thing, wasn't I? So let's come round and let's find somewhere to land. That big runway that we flew over would have been good. So let's come back round.
don't see anything in the uh, checklist as to why it, uh, it's going to alt first and yesterday night when I tried it it was going to height so I was getting the correct reading so there's obviously something I'm doing wrong there that I need to uh, I need to check out um, not quite sure what that would be but uh, probably something pretty obvious I should think okay so we're in that position everything is cool so then we can go to uh, auto we can go to the um, go around so we'll do that now make sure I get the right key because that would be embarrassing uh, where is it there we go it's that one so we're now doing the rearward takeoff the heli helicopter the helicopter has control so you can vaguely see where we were down there just let, uh, let it keep going for a little bit you can see it's doing a gentle rearward uh, trajectory right let's now take out engine 2 and put it into idle you see it's rejected my hands are off the helicopter's now taking us back pretty much to where we were and I'm going to have to remember when we touch down that I need to lower the collective because otherwise we'll bounce back up and we're down, look at that, there we go clever helicopter brought us back safely and uh, the helicopter was doing all the flying there fantastic So there you go, really interesting helicopter, there is, uh, there is so much, so much to it. Um, this video really is only scratching the surface and uh, you will see uh, a lot more in uh, future videos as we get more involved in some of the systems, especially when the Action Pack expansion comes out we start looking at uh, doing some missions and that sort of thing with there but uh, there really is just a lot to uh, to sink your teeth into just do a manual takeoff now gear up and it's interesting from the point of view a it's a very stable platform uh, a lot of the way the aircraft is designed with the uh, canted fenestron, the uh, design of the rotors, that you have a nice uh, level attitude. It's all designed to make it as easy for the pilot as possible and safe. When you have an aircraft for uh, that you're using for work, offshore work, you need to know you've got a nice, stable, safe aircraft, and uh, that's what this does. Issue. We can 
see that square there. Seems to happen sometimes from time to time. Seems to be regional as well. well that's quite an interesting spot down there, isn't it? Where's the wind? Okay. Okie dokie, we're going to land down there in that field. We will pretend we've got a VIP that we need to drop off, so I'm going to uh, just remove that for the time being. Right, before landing checklist, we need to lose some speed actually before I start doing that. Five hundred. Right, 
so we're down, so shut down, uh, here we go, parking brake on, which it is, collector pitch minimum, it is cyclic stick and pedal centred, they are both engines to idle, floats if installed are off, let's get over there, there we go, uh, RA1, RA2 off, ECS off. Uh, where are you? Where are you? I s had you. Had you right in front of me. ECS. Suddenly having a complete mental blank. ECS, where did you go? Report, uh, which is there. So, block time, two hours, seven minutes. Flight time, one hour, 32 minutes. The video won't be as long as this, by the way, because obviously I've edited it, because there were times where I was looking things up and just checking things, which you would have been very bored to have, had to have watched. So, we've changed that. So, that's giving you all your information there. Uh, we've got download in progress. We need to wait for that to go to download uh, complete. But what we will do in the meantime is we'll turn off all our lights. We don't need those anymore. Turn off the signs. Let's see exit we can put to off. The panic the passengers. Um, when that is, there we go. Download is now complete. And we can now go battery and generator off. And quick look around. If we mess off, what if we were meant to do that earlier? Can't see that anywhere, but the, the next section on the checklist is all switches off, so I guess that is encompassed in there. Quick look down here. Uh, everything is fine. I'm going to put the H tours into standby. And while I remember, let's have the weather radar off as well. Okay. I think it's cool there. So there you go. Thank you ever so much for joining the flight in beautiful Italy. I think as you can see, it's quite a complex aircraft. There's a lot to learn. As I said, this is not a tutorial. Uh, this is me uh, having my second flight in the aircraft, just getting used to anything and uh, and having some fun with it. But it is it is rather special. So I hope you enjoyed the flight. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you on the channel again soon, where we'll, we'll have some more adventures in the H160, no doubt. Take care now. Bye-bye.